Hey, and welcome to the Summerbrook Takeaway. I am Tanner Treffin and joined by Pastor Joey Rumble, and we're discussing uh, Craig Yohill, one of our church elders' message messages uh, yesterday. Sunday was awesome, um, and so let's dig into it. Yeah, it was awesome. It was great. I was listening hey, to it on the doing? road because I was on vacation, and we were heading back, and I was listening to it on the road. Yeah, it was a great good, message. Good to have you back. Yeah, yeah it's, it's good. good to be back. Cool. cool. Um, yeah, the rock of supply, man. Craig, you just opened up my eyes to... I, I read that story, like you said, in, in, in Numbers and, and things like Exodus. I was like, okay, cool rock. And then I know Paul talks about it, rock is Christ. But it just didn't make sense to me, and you really opened my eyes out up to really understand it. And uh, we'll dig into that some more. But um, you talked about how the chief problem with uh, God's people was they allowed their circumstances to define their faith instead of their the capability of their God and men. How easy is it for us to fall into that all the time? You know, life's just overwhelming. It's hard, and we just get frustrated, run down, complaining, miserable, instead of believing in God and what he can do. Yeah, and that was actually one of my biggest takeaways was when going through tough times, don't lash out by complaining. I think that's clearly one of our biggest challenges is when your faith, you start to lose faith or you start to at least waver or complain at the Lord. When what we should do is remember the faithfulness of God. Remember what he has done. And the Israelites did, wouldn't do that. They would not continue to reflect on how God had brought them through the plagues, brought them through the Red Sea, provided them miracle after miracle. So that that, that really spoke to me. Yeah, and I, and I would think these attitudes are contagious. Like when one person starts that complaining and that negativity, oh. it's just it's so much easier to kind of rub off and you start grumbling and complaining too. And then your whole household just starts complaining. And But I think the opposite is true. If you can combat that with your talking about thankfulness, remembrance, what God has done. Yeah. Um, it, and so just guarding your words and what you allow to speak into the environment is huge there. Yeah, I'm starting to feel really convicted as we talk right now. <laughs> so, I mean, we just got to be so... Uh, looking to the bigness of God in every situation instead of our circumstances and complaining. Uh, and, but you also want to be authentic with the Lord, uh, but get, run it to God, give it to the Lord, and then say, okay, God, I know uh, I'm reminding, of your bid, reminding myself of how big you are yeah. and great you are. That's so good. Um, I love, Craig, you talked about uh, showing, like, true uh, love for Christ um, that, it's not just doing the religious rituals, but it's like having that transformed life. He said, the proof is a changed life living for his glory, not fulfilling religious obligations. And so as Christians, are we just like checking the boxes, reading our Bible, praying, going to church, and like I've done the, my religious things? Or are we truly transformed? Uh, are we day in and day out, you know, how we live our life? Are we living that life of faith fully in love with Jesus? Or are we just checking boxes and trying to be good religious people? And so I think that that message really spoke to that. And that, that's the reason for this podcast mm -hmm. is that uh, what I've learned is we can uh, listen to a great message on Sunday and meet with the Lord and forget it during the week instead of uh, making sure we apply it to our lives. That's where transformation happens. Yeah. I, I believe uh, like our, our church services where we're wanting to encounter the power and the presence of God, then at the same time that you're encountering that that transformation, uh, use those, those moments of encountering God's presence uh, to also say, okay, God, what are you saying to me? How do I apply this uh, to my life? The takeaways. Walking in God's presence throughout the throughout the day and not letting your mind be like, okay, I did my church thing, but let me do my work thing. But your work becomes worship, you know, and, and letting, like just as the rock was falling or along with the people, letting God's presence be with you throughout the day and, and applying and, and walking in your takeaways throughout oh, yeah. the day. Oh, yeah, that's great. Um, I, Craig, Craig really helped us um, know as a church uh, to grow in Christian maturity. You got to know how to... First, you've got to be a Bible reader and really dig in into the Word, the living Word of God, um, but to study it. Uh, and when you come across some, something you don't know, Craig was leading us how when he didn't understand this whole rock of supply thing in, in Exodus, that he dug in like a tick, he said. Um, and he, he dug into Scripture, tried to figure out what, what is going on. He was reading the different places in Scripture where it talks about this rock, 
Um, he went to look at commentaries and reminded us that as you read commentaries, you got to know those are fallible human minds too. That's not the word of God anymore. And so you have to take that in consideration. Uh, go back to the original Greek and Hebrew and see what the words actually mean. Um, because in the translation to English, the English language sometimes misses some of the meaning of the original language. And, and all those different things kind of really help you understand what was God's heart and, and what was his meaning in those words um, that can that can be lost to us sometimes. Yeah, and so my favorite uh, steps in that, in, in reflecting on the Lord, in, in what you're talking about there, I love soap journaling, so you, you slow down and really meditate on the scripture. I, I love the ESV study Bible. Mm. It's tr- it is really, really good, and it's been around several years now, and it is a real good, rich, basic way to, to get deeper in God's word. I also love the NIV uh, application commentary. Uh, I, I think it, it, it's very, it really gets into it deeper. Uh, those are some quick uh, uh, applicable ones that I, I would encourage you to get access to. Also, in, in accessing the Greek and the Hebrew, one of the best ways to do it is just on the Google search. Type in the scripture and then it'll bring you to biblehub.com is one of the options. There's some that would be way off and wrong, but uh, biblehub.com takes you straight uh, to uh, looking at the Greek and the, the Hebrew of those verses. And so if you just type in that verse and click on it, go to biblehub.com, that's a great way to get to the original meaning quickly. Yeah, that's good. A lot of great resources out there as well as uh, just making sure you're reading Scripture in context. And figuring out who is the audience, was it for us today, um, and what what is the context, not just of that one verse, but in the chapter, and then the whole book, and then the whole Bible. And that's kind of what we're doing, this whole Red Thread series. Yeah. We're trying to show you that these these verses, these these um, these words that were spoken to the Israelites were also for us today to teach us, to encourage us, and to point to Christ um, and seeing the bigger context of the Bible within these smaller stories. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, I loved how you were talking about the... The Rock just being still there with the people, and he like turned around, like still there. So like the last uh-huh. guy, <laughs> right? That was just so funny, and um, and he talked about how uh, Jesus saved us, that he gave, got his victory not despite the cross, but through the cross, and that just reminded us that God uses our suffering, um, that he, uh, that Jesus overcame the world through the cross, not not like the cross wasn't a. Um, a thing you're just trying to get out of the way, but he, he used the cross to get the victory in the same way God puts us through those struggles to conform us into his nature, to bring us into that greater endurance and, and closer to his character. And so um, just know that God's using you <laughs> in those hard places. And, oh, yeah. Um, and know he's not abandoning you. Um, cool. So what was your takeaway, Pastor Joe? It, it was that first one about in the fi- midst of difficult situations, don't complain. Remind yourself of the greatness of God and call out to God. God, help me to keep my eyes on you. The other one was when Moses was supposed to speak to the rock, instruct the yes. rock, and how yes. Craig shared, be very careful not to misrepresent God. Yep. And and I, for me, as uh, pastoring the church, I, I, I wanted to be really careful that I never misrepresent mm-hmm. God. Be very careful. Uh, and sometimes you can get exasperated and just wore out and misrepresent God, uh, man, come to the Lord and know that you're his vessel. Every one of us needs to ep- represent God well in everything we do. So that was my other takeaway. That was huge. That was the point um, of the message for me is w- how the whole rock thing was is um, when Moses struck the rock the first time, that was symbolic of Jesus being struck for us, the, the rock of supply um, and the water poured out for all the Israelites and how Jesus' blood is poured out for salvation for all mankind now. But then the second time, God commanded Moses um, to talk to the rock, to not strike it. And Moses disobeyed and struck it twice. Um, And that's why Moses was punished, because it was symbolic that Jesus has already been struck, that the rock doesn't need to be struck again. And so now we we can call out on the name of Christ and anyone who calls on him and can be saved. And so Jesus doesn't need to be crucified again. There doesn't need to be any more sacrifices. It was sufficient. Um, And so exactly what you're saying, that um, to not go around in anger and frustration and um, trying to feel like I need to save the world, but the, the rock was already struck. Jesus yeah. has already done it, and so call on to God who wants to pour out uh, lavishly that living water, the Holy Spirit on us, and help us in our time of need. And so 
um, all of us, and not just pastors, but all of us represent Christ. We're his image bearers to the world. And as Christians, are called a kingdom of priests, um, that we're God's representatives and showing what Jesus is like. And so all of us need to take representing Christ seriously um, and not going around in frustration and anger. And so I, I, that's definitely was my takeaway, too, to represent Christ well in my life. Yeah, and, and leaders, Scripture talks about, uh, are going uh, that representation as leaders for the Lord is so crucial. Speaking of leaders, we got our churchwide leadership meeting in at my house uh, on uh, June eighth, June eighth at six p.m. So uh, all leaders, all people, uh, all churchwide leaders, we uh, excited about our uh, churchwide leadership meeting at our house. Always a good time. Yeah, it's great. So uh, June eighth, that's a Thursday night, six p.m. Love to have you. It's going to be a great night together. Yeah, we'll eat food together. I think bring a dish to share. Yeah, bring a yeah. dish to share. Also, man, I, I wasn't here. Uh, I was on vacation, but I just wanted another shout out uh, to um, Serve Day of everyone that served and made a difference for the Lord. Thank you so much. It was a joy to serve with you as well. And then next week, we're going to dig into uh, continuing through Exodus, the Red Thread series. And part of it's going to be looking into the Ten Commandments and the Red Thread there, but also getting a healthy grasp, uh, really looking again at a uh, grasp of God loves you and the healthy fear of God. And so I, I'm so pumped to bring God's word this Sunday. You don't want to miss it. I really believe God's going to do some great things this Sunday. That's awesome. I can't wait to hear it. And so any final thoughts? For- uh, that, that's it. You know, the, the complaining... And don't complain, look to the greatness of God, and don't rip, rip, misrepresent the Lord. Awesome, church. So uh, let's not just check the box. Let's live it out, walk in our takeaway. So if you want to make headway, you need, need a takeaway. Take God bless you guys, and the Lord be with you.